And uh, we'll now recognize Mr. Uh, Geddes, and he is the an ad adjunct scholar at the American Enterprise uh, Institute. Welcome, and you're recognized. Uh, thank you, uh, Mr. Chairman, Micah. I appreciate uh, the opportunity to be back and uh, speaking to the committee once again. And I uh, just uh, wanted to uh, note that in addition to my affiliation with the American Enterprise Institute, I'm an associate professor at uh, Cornell University in the Department of Policy Analysis and Management. And that uh, just this semester with a uh, Cornell grad, John Foote, uh, class of 74 engineering grad whose company developed EasyPass, we have started a new program and in infrastructure policy at uh, Cornell, and I have some information about that. And uh, that is to educate future generations of uh, students and young people on the important issues that this committee addresses. And I hope to be able to work with the committee in the future and hopefully with yourself in uh, developing this program. In fact, I think it's the only one of only two such programs that are currently operational in the United States focusing on infrastructure policy, the other one being at the University of Minnesota. Uh, so I'd just like to draw everyone's attention to that and seek your advice on that. I want to address a few things regarding the uh, topic that the, uh, the committee is focusing on today, which is the Northeast Carter's future and options for high-speed rail development and private sector participation in transportation. There's a couple of key issues I'd like to address. The first is to get a concept on the table that I think is extremely relevant for this debate that is, I believe, uh, absent, which is the concept of a residual claim. Some, Sounds like sort of an academic concept, but I think very important. A residual claim as well as residual claimants. Second, I want to be clear about the value that I think par private participation in the Northeast Corridor can bring to the, the nation um, in, in several different ways. And third, I'd like to emphasize that the gains from private participation as judging from a number of economic studies that focus on this, do not come from reducing wages or reducing employment once you get more private participation. They come from increased value creation and value capture due to the incentives and the skills of the private sector partners that you bring in. I also want to emphasize that through pu competitive public-private partnerships, it's possible for the public sector to realize the value associated with private participation now through an upfront concession payments that we've seen. So the, pro the public sector does not have to wait to uh, realize these benefits. I want to emphasize that a residual claim is defined as a property right to the profits from a given economic activity. That is, who actually has a right to obtain the value that they create from undertaking new efforts in economic activity. This is a key public policy issue for the Northeast Corridor. The question is, are the property rights to the value creation from additional investment and effort clearly assigned to some well-defined group? I think it's difficult to overstate the importance of this, and I don't think they are at present. One of the key things that private participation does is to introduce clear, well-defined residual claimants who have a right to capture the value that they create by better using the current assets that we have on the Northeast Corridor. Private participation creates such well-defined residual claimants. From this fact of the, the impact of bringing in private participation and residual claimants, a number of important social benefits can be obtained. Those include the expertise and skills of the private sector, those include the sharp, focused incentives that you get from private participation that you do not currently have. And they also include access to new types of capital, particularly equity capital, which is risk-taking capital that is, is critical. Those, those three aspects of private participation would bring enormous social benefits to increase private participation on, on the Northeast Corridor. I want to note also that there's inherent risks, substantial risks, in these types of activities that are currently entirely being borne by taxpayers. One of the key benefits of bringing private participants into this situation is that you have people who are experts in bearing risk, that's a service that they provide, is a risk-bearing service, and they make the cost of that risk-bearing transparent. I think that's actually an enormous benefit of bringing uh, private participation in. I'll just close by noting that one of the, I think, underappreciated benefits of private participation 
is the fact that the public sector can realize that value immediately through competitive bidding by competing groups of potential private participa participants in a number of areas. Suppose it's operating a, a train station, for example, and you can concession that out, receive an upfront concession payment, as Maryland did on some of the I-95 rest stops that I noted in my testimony, and that that's one major advantage of bringing in private participation that is not reliant on negative effects on labor. So thank you, Mr. Chairman, and I'll stop there. Well, I thank you, and uh, what we're going to have to do, we have a vote going on right now. We have two minutes to get to the floor. So uh, our two panelists, we will return. I, I, I think we can be back here at 1145. We'll reconnect.